93. Trans Am. What a LT1. Have a fun of the hood. Me and my brother got a running good. Wake up behind them old Ray Bands. Catch me if you can. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Horsepower 2. I'm back on my uh, 93 Trans Am today. Um, swapping to a uh, like a LS style 411 PCM. So I got my newer uh, 96, 97 LT1 timing cover. It's got the hole for the uh, crank sensor. And I have the uh, reluctor that goes underneath of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop off my uh, my timing cover and uh, put these on. And uh, this will be the same then as a 96 or 97 car. 96 and 7's already had this on there. Uh, I'm not running an OptiSpark or a mechanical water pump, so I just had those uh, welded up. So, like I said, we'll go ahead and dive into this thing. So the first thing I need to do is get this water pump off. Let's take off your two hoses here. There's three bolts on each side. I already got them off. And this thing just pulled off. It's a little tight, but it comes out okay i got the water pump off you can see there's the three bolts on each side that's what that looks like <coughs> so this probably looks a lot different than you're uh, used to on an lt1 um i was actually running a rear distributor before this on a uh on a tune port ecm <coughs> i'm just upgrading to something near so i got the basic uh like Gen 1 balancer and timing cover on here. The small block Chevy timing cover is basically the same as the LT1. Just the LT1 has a little something extra on top, these three bolts on top. So I just added a little piece of sheet metal on top of a small block Chevy cover. And uh, that way I could delete my, my OptiSpark and my, and my water pump. But now we need the crank sensor. So we're gonna go ahead and run a uh, 96 and 7 timing cover so uh, next we need to take this uh, this pulley and balancer off so we will get under the car and do that now now like I said this is gonna look a little different because it's small block Chevy instead of LT1 but it uh it basically is the same thing even though it looks a little different so I'm gonna take off these three bolts here that holds the pulley onto the hub in my case, it's a balancer, but the LT1 just has a hub, but it's the same idea. So I'm going to go ahead and get these three bolts out. Once you got your three bolts out, you can go ahead and take your center bolt out. You might have to uh, put it in gear to keep the motor from spinning over, depending on how tight this is on your car. Once you got your board out, your pulley come off. And now you gotta take your hub off. Uh, you gotta have a special puller to get your hub off. And I'll go grab that now. Okay, so I got my uh, harmonic balancer puller, or like a steering wheel puller. That just bolts on there with them three bolts. It's got this big threaded hole in the middle. Take this uh, threaded section here put this in there and uh, that will uh, pry against the front of the crankshaft and uh, as you turn this on it'll, it'll pull that balancer off now I got it easy because this is a, a small block Chevy balancer for whatever reason the LT1 balancer is kind of stupid um, so having this nice big hole so you can pull off the front of the crank it basically has a hole it's only big enough for the bolt so you don't really have anything to pull off of i've tried uh backing the bolt off some and, and pulling against the head of the bolt but depending on how good your balancer is on there or your hub uh, you can actually shove the bolt through the threads and kind of mess your crank up so that's not really a good option uh when i took the lt1 balancer off of this what I did was I ran down to the hardware store because you got to have something that's, that's skinny and strong to pull against. 
but I ran down to the hardware store and uh, I bought a big uh, T-handle Allen wrench and uh, I cut the handle off of it to where it was just straight and I put that inside of here and I put that in basically I pushed against the bottom of the hole and that worked on that but uh, I got it easy now with the small box Chevy so I'm gonna go ahead and get this balancer on here and then it will pull this off all right we got the tool all bolted up now you see I'm gonna have to uh, pop this tranny in gear so the motor don't spin so let me go do that real quick so I had to upgrade to a bigger ratchet because uh, it takes a decent amount of force pull this thing off there I'm gonna have to sit you guys down so I can use two hands on this Finally, alrighty. We got her. Okay, so now just, uh, you wanna go ahead and hang your oil pan down. There's a, there's a lip in the bottom here of the timing cover that this gasket kind of sits in. So the way I like to do it is, uh, you got a 13 millimeter head bolt here and here, and also on the back of the motor. So I like to take those uh, pretty loose on the back. There's a bunch of little, uh, I think those are actually half inch. And then there's a bunch of little three eighths bolts uh, in between them. I go ahead and take all the three eighths bolts out. Like I said, loosen the back two, and then uh, you take out the front two. I got them all out right now, except for this one. And you're gonna just let your uh, let your oil pan hang like that. So this is all free here. So now just the uh, perimeter bolts on the timing cover, and we'll have the timing cover off. So I just gotta take my perimeter bolts out on my timing cover, but uh, if you're stock LT1, uh, three of your bolts, it's gonna take your distributor off. Then just do the rest of them around there. So I'm gonna go ahead and zip this off. I took off the T from my uh, my timing pointer. I had a timing pointer here. I took off. This RTV I use, the right stuff. It's amazing at sealing things, but uh, when it comes time to take them back off, sometimes it's a little more challenging with it on there. As you can see, I got a, a double roller timing chain. It fits nicely underneath that. Uh, that's basically why I went to that small block Chevy cover. It's got a little bit more room in it. I had this little spacer in my balancer too. Um, your my reluctor now will take up that same space that that was at. But uh, I don't think my LT1 timing cover will clear that. So. Uh, I got a real nice uh, single chain I'm gonna swap out to. So I set the timing cover on top of this. It looks like the timing cover clears the dual chain, but here's the problem. When you put this reluctor on, if you 
you look back here, it's actually touching. If you spin this thing, it looks like it's clearing, but if you spin it, you can see on here where it's been rubbing that, that skinny little line there. So that chain's hitting that, and that's why I have to go to a, a single chain. I think uh, EFI connection, they make a uh, a different one of these that, uh, that does clear dual timing chains, but it's kind of expensive, so I just went ahead. I got a really nice single. It should be fun. And uh, this scratch also leads us to our next problem that I kind of forgot about. Uh, I shouldn't be able to spin that. It's uh, You can see it's got a keyway here. That key should keep this wheel in the right spot. But, so here's the next problem. There's a, uh, a key in this keyway that holds this gear onto the crank in the right spot. And because this is a 93, it never had one of these factory. And the key is actually kind of like shaved down right there. It's just basically flat. And uh, I'm gonna have to, once I get this gear off, I'm gonna have to get a different key that comes all the way out so that this thing holds position. This has to be in the right spot for your computer to know where the motor's at so it can fire your your spark and your injectors at the right time. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take these three bolts off here and get this timing chain off of here and uh, go ahead and pull this, this uh, double double chain sprocket off here so I can get my single one on. All right, so I got my three bolts out. This just comes off now. And uh, I gotta get a puller and, and pull this now. All right guys, so I got my pulling tool on there. Uh, that's gonna work very similarly to the uh, the balancer puller I had, except for it has some teeth that go behind the gear instead of actually bolting to it. I'm just gonna spin this and it should pull this gear right off. Alrighty. So you can see the step in that uh in that key right there. I need one that uh that's the same height all the way to the end instead of having that step right there. So I was really hoping to get this uh finished today. Unfortunately, I forgot all about that key in there. And uh, I'm gonna have to probably get online and find one of those. So I'm gonna have to uh, cut this off here. And uh, I'll get that key in and then we can uh, button this up. And uh, then we'll go on to the wiring and the tuning, which uh, that's, the, that's the part that scares most people and keeps them from doing something like this. But uh, it's really not hard. Uh, this, uh, the LT1s have all the same parts as far as uh, sensors and wiring as uh, as what that computer was meant to have. So you don't even really have to cut or splice. You might have to, you might have to combine a couple wires into like one spot, like a couple. But uh, the vast majority you're just going to be pulling the pin out of the old connector and putting it in the new one. It's not hard at all. So, uh, thanks for watching. I'm sorry I didn't uh, get this back together and do what I was trying to do. But uh, things like that happen sometimes. So, uh, I'll catch you all next time.